And now we go on to question six. They say the experiments uh, are performed to compare the refractive indices of different material. They say in one of the experiments, a light ray passes from air to material A and the angle of incident and refraction are measured. Right, they say the refraction, the refractive index rather of air is one. Right, so firstly, oh, they give us this graph. They say the graph below was drawn using um, the results of material A. So firstly, they say to us, we must um, uh, make or give a definition, right, of the term angle of incidence. Right, and please remember, uh, guys, when we talk about the angle of incidence, right, this is the angle between the normal uh, to a refracting surface, right, and the incident ray. So in this case, remember that it would be the angle between the normal Okay, so remember the, the, the normal, right, to, in this case, so that would be the incident ray over there, right, so you are looking at the normal being 90 degrees to the refractive surface, right, and the incident ray, right, please remember that. So they say calculate the refractive index of material A, right, using the data in the graph. Okay, so... What we can do is, of course, we can use Snell's law. All right, so that's uh, the first option. So we can say that if I take from Snell's law and I, okay, the refractive index multiplied by the sine of the incident ray uh, is equal to the final refractive index, right, multiplied by the sine of the reflected uh, ray. Okay, so in this case, we know that uh, our refractive, uh, or rather refractive index for A, they said to us that's one, okay? And the refractive index in this case, um, okay, so that is one. And so sine of theta i, that's uh, 0 0.56, Okay, and we want to find out what is the refractive index for the material. A sine of theta r is 0 0.37. Okay, right, so all we simply are going to do is just divide both sides by 0 0.37. Uh, 0 0.37 rather. And if we cancel that, Okay, right, now if you notice there, uh, so if we take our calculator, we'll have 0 0.56 divided by, so 0 0.56 divided by 0 0.37, and I get a value of 1.51. Okay, so that is it there. Okay, so that's the refractive index of the material. And uh, what you also could have done is just to take the gradient of the graph, okay? And um, what then you do with that gradient is that uh, you can take the gradient and say, well, you know that the gradient will be one over uh, the refractive index. And so you can find it that way. All right. Now they said to us, calculate the speed uh, of light through the material A. Uh, and please remember, ladies and gents, you know, we've got these formulae. So N is equal to C over V, where N is the refractive index, right? So we know this is going to be 1.51. C is the speed of light. So that's 3 times 10 to the power 8. And our V value, this is what we are looking for. And all we simply are going to do is just cross multiply. So V would be 3 times 10 to the power 8 divided by 1.51. Okay, and what do we get there? We'll get 3 exponent 8 divided by 1.51. And that gives me, okay, let's write that in scientific form. 
that gives us 1.99 times 10 exponent 8 meters per second. All right, and that would be the speed of light through the material A. Right, so the next question, they say, if material A is replaced by material B, the angle of refraction is 31, okay? Uh, when the angle of incident is 40, right? They say calculate the refractive index of material B, right? So once again, we are going to do exactly the same thing, right? So we said this is an I sine of uh, theta I is equals to nf a sine of theta r okay so uh, once again so we know this is one multiplied by the sine of 31 okay so that's the angle of refraction or oh, rather uh, uh, sorry uh, that's the angle of refraction so the angle of incident is 40 so that would be sine of 40. And in this case, we're looking for an F, right? The refractive index uh, sine of 31. Okay, so let's try and get that. So this would give us, so we'll, we're going to have sine of 40 uh, divided by the sine of 31. Okay, and I get 1.25. Okay, so the refractive index in this case will be 1.25. Right, so there we have it right there. And uh, by the way, just to remember, okay, we'll, we'll get to that in just a little while. Right, so now they say to us, redraw the graph for material A. On the same set of axes, right, and draw the graph you expect from material B, label the graphs uh, of material A and material B clearly. Now, ladies and gents, what you note there is that the refractive index for material B is actually lower. But remember that this graph here gives me the sine of uh, theta r. You can actually even check it out, right? And say, well, but I know uh, that my refractive, my angle of refraction in this case is sine of 31. Now let's check what is sine 31. So if I say sine 31, that gives me 0 0.51, right? Okay, so that would be my angle of refraction. Uh, okay. So 0 0.5, so I would have 0 0.5 there, right? But what would be my incident angle? Okay, that would be 40. So what would be the sine of 40 there? So sine of 40 would be 0 0.64, right? So in this case, you'd have 0 0.64, okay, and a much higher uh, value so you'd have a value over there so which means the graph b would have a much steeper gradient than graph a so there are our two graphs okay so this would clearly be graph b of course i already have graph a but in your case you would have to draw it so this is what it would look like Right, now, uh, let's go on to the next part. They say total internal uh, refraction occurs when a light ray passes through the material A uh, to material B. They say the critical angle F of material A is 49. Right, now they say which angle uh, of, uh, which rather, which range of angles will make it possible for total internal refraction. Now note in this case that because a critical angle is 40, uh, 49, then it means that uh, that angle must definitely be less than 90, but it must be greater than 49. 
Okay, so that is what would be, uh, would cause total, inf uh, or rather, yes, would cause total internal uh, refraction. Right, and now they ask us what other condition is necessary for total internal refraction uh, to take place? Right, so we note in this case now, note that we're using material A and material B, right? So which means that the refraction index, right? So the refraction index, okay, uh, for material A, uh, for material A must be, greater than right the uh, in fact I I forgot to say index over there right uh, must be greater than uh, than the refractive index fraction index for material B. Okay, so that would be the condition there, all right, in order for total internal reflection uh, to take place. Now, guys, um, uh, I will still teach this section uh, quite, uh, you know, in depth, okay, so please look out for that. Uh, I will do so in the near future, right? So let's go to question seven. I hope that question six was well understood.